The cheerleading was 266-266, uh, uh, but nobody talked about uh, 83 because the household survey showed 83,000 jobs, not 266, and uh, only 17,000 of those 83,000 jobs created in the household survey last month was in full-time employment. But I think more to the point uh, is that when you're taking a look at the industry composition, uh, it's uh, rather remarkable. It also helps explain why average hourly earnings are so weak, uh, because it is an average number. But we are seeing month in, month out, this compositional shift towards low-value-added service sectors. I mean, leisure hospitality now, one in every eight jobs in the United States is in that particular sector. Uh, these people make 40% uh, less uh, than everybody else in the economy does. And uh, their growth in this part of the economy, whether it's in hotels or it's in fast food restaurants, uh, the employment growth there in the past year is 2.6%. It's double what it is in the rest of the country. So, uh, you know, you tack on that, uh, you know, local government, uh, big, um, big employment gains uh, there, uh, and uh, waste management, yeah. big employment Can I point gains something there. Out? So, uh, David, I it's, want to so make it's very a, concentrated David, in low-value-added areas. I just want to make a political point here, which is in each of the past, the current administration and the past administration, when there were str strong job growth under Obama, the Republicans said, yeah, but it's low quality. And then you have some of the Democrats saying, yeah, the strong job growth under Trump, but the, yeah, but it's low quality. It turns out both sides are right. I mean, it's just they're right at different times because they're saying it for different reasons. But it turns th this this index shows low quality job growth under both administrations and no shows. real change. You had a ramp up at the end of the Obama administration and then a come down during the Trump administration. Right. Uh, Dan, I just have a quick question for you, which picks up on what Dave was saying. Any particular industries where this job growth is happening that's responsible for it? Is it retail? Is it leisure hospitality? Is it, it, it not it, manufacturing? There's four industries that you should look at because if you look at the gains in them, they completely offset the losses in goods producing jobs. Um, and that is uh, healthcare and social assistance, retail trade, uh, administrative and waste services, and then of course, leisure and hospitality, which David just mentioned. So those four sectors, when you have a lot of job growth in those kinds of sectors, that uh, keeps the index down, essentially. It keeps the index down, but it, it, it's also the point of absorption because we've effectively hit peak service. One of the things that happened that people aren't aware of, at the time of the Great Recession, we'd had gains in the service economy all along, right, from the 1960s you know, through today. But at the, at the point of the Great Recession, the size of the service economy relative to the whole stopped growing. It's stopped still growing. 83 percent. I, I, I want to leave a little bit of time, guys, because I really want to know what to do with this th this idea well, here. Go ahead, Would Tyler. you indulge me a question for Dave, if, if, if I might, and that is this. The, the facts that you cited in, in your first answer, Dave, uh, and the numbers that we've been talking about here, do they point to inevitably recession, or do they point more to an economy that is in a massive mega transition away from certain kinds of jobs and toward others, but does not necessarily mean that the economy is going to recess. Well, uh, you know, what I said earlier I really had nothing to do with the cycle itself. And as, as you said, this is an, an ongoing transition that we're seeing month in, month out of the data. Now, when I take a look at the non-farm payroll report, uh, I almost pretend that I'm an, an equity analyst looking at, uh, looking at the equity market. Uh, so I'm taking a look, for example, at the cyclically sensitive sectors of the non-farm <coughs> payroll number. So I'm looking at transportation services. I am looking at retail. I'm looking at construction. I'm looking at durable goods manufacturing, so on and so forth. So I'm not looking at the sectors that never go down, because there are some areas that never go down. Health and education don't go down in a recession. I'm always looking at, you know, in terms of driving forward with the forecast, what are the areas of employment that give us trouble signs at inflection points? And I could tell you that the cyclically sensitive segments of the employment report uh, actually were stagnant. Uh, they didn't decline, but they were actually uh, flat on the month. And that's, that's an early sign for me. So, I mean, you can blankly look at the headline number and draw your conclusions, but there's a wealth of information when you look at the sectors. The one thing I'll say is this much. If you actually believe in the non-farm payroll report today, which had a lot of tailwinds, I mean, a, a five-week interval, not a four-week, a late Thanksgiving, uh, there was the returning of the GM strikers, a lot of tailwinds behind today's number. But if you're buying the number uh, lock, stock, and barrel, uh, then you have to believe that productivity is contracting again. 
because uh, I noticed earlier that Steve mentioned that you know that the uh, right. the GDP estimate <clears throat> for the fourth quarter went up. Yeah. Why would that happen? Employment doesn't go into GDP. Spending and output go into GDP. And when you're taking a look at spending and output in real terms in the economy, fourth quarter, it's barely 1% growth. When you're looking at employment, the labor input to the economy, well, it's 2%. So we already had, actually, surprisingly, a negative productivity print in the third quarter, fractionally. But if you believe today's number, productivity is going down again. So I would readily say that it's not a GDP yeah. recession, but... But we do have a recession, by the way, in profits, that much we do know, and the market's going up because of the expanding multiple. But there is a recession, actually, in productivity, as we sit here right now, right. and I well, think that's a, a clearly st we structural could, problem. 